Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast from White Hole Learning. I am Morten Røvik and I'm here with my good friend and colleague Lars Rotskill Hendriksen. Privet Lars. Privet Morten. Good to see you as always and it's always good to be with our viewers and listeners out there. We always start off the episodes with a quick reminder of the purpose of this podcast, which is to help you learn GTD or become even better GTDers. So we hope that today's episode supports you in that. If you are new to GTD, we always recommend you go back and listen to the first episodes, episodes one through six, to get an introduction to the basics of getting things done. Today's episode number is number 98, slowly approaching the 100 number. And today's episode is our annual GTD tools check-in. It is. And um, we've been making lists of all our hardware and software that we are using to, you know, get our stuff done. And uh, hopefully you, the listener, will find this interesting. I'm, you know, I'm often asked what, what kind of note taker do you use? You know, what, what, what are your tools? So hopefully you will find it interesting. Um, I don't know. Should we start with software or hardware? I think we usually start off with hardware. At least that's where I uh, started off. Um, and yeah, mm. hopefully this will be uh, interesting and inspiring for, for people. Um, these are some typically some of our most viewed episodes actually mm. on, on YouTube at least. So uh, hopefully there will be some uh, some good tips and tricks for you, uh, you listeners and, and viewers out there. Yeah. Um, so would you go first? What's on mm, top of your to. hardware list? Yeah, well, it's as I went through, I, I realized I really should be uh, should be investing in in, in Apple stock because <laughs> it's uh, it, 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 it really would make sense at this point. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm at the the office here. Um, I have the uh, my my trusted old Mac Mini Intel based still, so mm. still looking to upgrade that at some point. But for now, still um, still works fine. At the the home office, uh, we have the uh, M1. Uh, Mac Mini, uh, I can clearly see a difference between these two. So I'm, mm. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to upgrading this. Uh, yeah, but you know, time will tell when that happens. At what kind of, uh, what M M number we will be at at that point. But uh, but yeah, that that'll be be nice to to upgrade that as well. Um, otherwise, when I'm on the the go, it's uh, typically the the iPad Pro. Still using that. Um, Working more and more with it, and uh, becoming more and more friends with it, especially with the most recent uh, iOS updates, is now working very well. Um, for example, being on the go, the integration between uh, Apple Mail and Reminders, for example, which is something that mm. I rely heavily on in my system, that works just fine. Drag and drop uh, mm. things, and it it just works well for me too. And that that tactile way of of working with it. So um, more and more happy with that, but obviously still has the limitations of being iOS only. So whenever we do, for example, seminars in Crucial Conversations for Mastering Dialogue, Crucial Conversations for Accountability, which I was just uh, certified in now a, a month or two ago, um, whenever we do that, we have custom software running um, on, on, on Mac OS. Uh, so we need the full full version. So that's when I had the, the MacBook Air, I think M1 or M2 forget which one which one it is but definitely a very nice a nice machine to to work on mm. um other than that i think it's yeah um yeah i'm still on the iphone the old the one from last year 14 is it uh, was, or was that the one that just came i don't know <laughs> i have no 14. desire to upgrade this year at least uh, mm. like i think most most people out there who have the one from mm. from last year uh, same goes for the apple watch the the ultra mm. still very happy with uh, with that so also no desire to upgrade and um you know scattered across home and, and office some some home pod minis as, as home hubs and uh, for music and you know just um the uh, occasional conversation with uh, with siri uh, slowly improving but still also i don't know if it's the the danish language version or just siri in general um still room for improvement there but but we we still yeah. use it yeah, I think that's the almost all the hardware. Um, other than that, here at the office, I have the Elgato key light, uh, which I'm still very, very happy with, very mm. stable. Um, and the the camera running is the the Canon EOS DSLR. I don't know which uh, mm. which specific uh, 
version it is. I'm still very happy with that one. I think um, when I upgrade this machine, I will start to play with the iPhone as a webcam because from what I've seen going forward, the integration with, you know, depth of field and how you can integrate in, uh, you know, Keynote or other applications. I think there are, you know, the, we're at that point where for me, there are so many cool tricks now that the iPhone can do as a webcam, as opposed to the Canon camera, uh, that I may actually be, be switching to that. But uh, for now, still on the, the Canon. Um, I think that's, um, I think that's about it on my end. What about you? Well, to, to start where you where you um, left off uh, with webcam, I'm using an El, El, Elgato uh, Facecam 4K, I think it is called. It's the 4K hmm. version, which I'm downscaling a little. I can zoom and move where I am, depending if I'm sitting or standing. You know, we both have sit standing desks where we can sit and stand and then um, and that's really good. You can create then scenes. So if I want to show you something that's um, below where you can see now, I can show you that. Like I can show you a thing. Mm, yeah. And um, I like that. And there's good software following in this. And I think the camera is decent. It um, could be. We have, we have tweaked the colors a little for this video, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, for my um, uh, main computer here at the office, it's um, Mac Mini M2, which I'm Ooh. super happy with. Yes, I know you will be jealous <laughs> yes. uh, or, lit or maybe envious, but uh, and and it is you know I'm I'm very normally when I have a um, a Mac because I've been having Macs for for forever I think it is they last between five and seven ish years for me so this is an upgrade I will have this machine for a long time so I then opted in to have a lot of memory um, and a big hard drive so it's it's not the cheapest uh, Mac mini m2 but it is um, it's a good one and I have a 27 inch uh, LG um, uh, monitor um, which is big enough for me I'm using uh, for those of you who are f uh, familiar with um, with um, Max, that you have the possibility to do um, spaces, I think they are called, where you can then just create as many screens you want and then swipe through them with the, you know a three finger swipe. You can change uh, to 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 see another screen and then have a set of applications there. Like I have now the L, the the eCam software that we're using to record this is on, on its own space. Uh, my mm, communication yeah. is in another other space, so I kind of compartmentalize them. So, like if I'm doing some video editing that I will be do later, that will be in a separate space where Premiere Pro will uh, live. So yeah, that's my Mac Mini. That's yeah. worth um, just just mentioning because I don't think we'll get back to that. I think that's one of the places where we differ. So I just checked, and this uh, Mac Mini that I have is uh, 2018. So that uh, about lines up with the, your estimate on on how long this will uh, will, will last me. Um, probably yeah. another year, and then 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 yeah. upgrade. Um, but I'm on two screens. I think they're both uh, 24 or 27, and I just really I really you know at home I only have one screen and I always miss having two yeah. <laughs> I really I used really to like have having, two before but two mm, no but I I switched at some point to a 27 inch iMac and um and I have the possibility to add you know four screens to this M2 or something like that you can have as many screens almost that you want because it has the cap capability but I don't miss it it's like, what what will I do with the, the side screen for me? That will be information that will just distract me. Um, so so I'm, I'm, I'm more into spaces. Well, that means that I can send you my old Mac Mini, right? Because you don't need them. <laughs> you don't need the multiple screens. <laughs> I no, so, <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, I, always, I always seem to have, you know, one thing that I want to reference and one thing that I want to work on, or at least, you know, not, not throughout the day, but there will be mm. multiple times during the day where I want mm. to have, you know, information on one screen that I need to cross-reference with some mm. information on another screen. I'll have my lists on one side and then I'll have the activity that you know I'll look at my list I'll choose to do one and then I'll head over and, and, and do that one 
So mm. I, but it, it does seem to differ for me because that's if I you know know what to argue on, on you know sticking to one screen. That's part of what I like with the iPad that it really forces me to just focus on one thing. So mm. I can argue both ways, but definitely when I'm at the office here, I want to you know look at the CRM system and then I want to mm. head on over to uh, mail the mail system and and, and send an mm. email. You know, so I'll I'll, I'll I'll like having having both of them on at the same time. Yeah. Sorry, well, back to your. That's okay. Your <laughs> that's okay. Um, no, um, one of the things that I, I try to find the, the name of this app that I'm using to to um, set what you call the track back. Uh, um, sorry, track um, pad actions for the, my um, uh, my computer. And I use something called Switch. Uh, it's part of the setup suite of um, programs. So that might be something our listener would like to look into and I use something called uh, let me see if I can find this it's in the tab bar uh, yes it's called yoink <laughs> y-o-i-n-k yoink is also part of this um, the setup and then the, the reason I'm using this is because then I I can program keyboard shortcuts so when I have I open I can have a keyboard shortcut that opened, for instance, my weekly review happens on a specific space. And when that space is open, I can just open the, the apps very quickly with, a, with a, a shortcut. And then I will use another, there's a keyboard combination to arrange them the way I want them, that resizes the windows and places them exactly where I want them. And instead of doing that manually, I'm super lazy. Um, so I don't want to spend time doing that. So it's like, ding, 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 poof, and then I'm ready for weekly review. So, um, okay. Um, continuing on my um, hardware setup, I have um, a MacBook Air M1 uh, that I used as my main machine to drive this screen, and uh, that was my main machine for a long time. But um, I wish, you know, I, I ended up buying the, the Mac Mini because I didn't have the brains or maybe the economy to buy the the, the harder bigger hard drive for the, um, the m1 um, uh, macbook air because mm. it is a, the macbook air with a big um, drive and uh, a, a, a enough um, um, memory is just as fast as this m1 uh, sorry, Mac mm. Mini, and it is, uh, and as I'm super happy with the Mac Mini. Even the M1 is a good buy. I would buy it today, if I wanted to to buy a new um, Mac. I would opt for a little more memory and a bigger hard drive, but it's a super machine. And I have, um, as you, the iPhone iPhone 14, and I think we both had the Pro model with the you know the good cameras. <laughs> And, uh, and and I'm using that to take uh, you know professional photos when I'm doing uh, you know d doing something like I I do recording with um, I have a setup with um, a teleprompter a small te teleprompter that uses the the iPhone as the camera and an, an older Android phone I have for for uh, you know give the prompter and that works r really well and it's been with many of the videos we made last year for for promotion and for the. Um, the mini series where we, you know, the free um, mini series course that we gave people before. Um, all the videos there is recorded by that. Um, and I have, as I think you also have that, the Apple Watch Pro. You, uh, uh, you hmm. forgot to mention that. Ultra. No, yeah. I didn't mention it. Sorry. Hmm? I did mention it, but yeah. You did mention it. One. Okay. I didn't pay attention then <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, and I have my trusted, which is still serving well. It's an old but very good uh, Fujitsu ScanSnap iX500 scanner, which I still use for scanning things. Um, I don't use it very often, but it's still very reliable and it's fast. And uh, I love this machine. Um, and I have a Remarkable 2 to make notes, the digital notes. It's like an um, e-ink note taker and... Uh, PDF viewer, that's how I use it. I use it with integration with Google Drive so I can pick up any um, document from Google Drive and, um, and from the Remarkable, in the Remarkable. And then as long as I have Wi-Fi coverage, I can do that and then pick it and annotate it and just save it back up or send it to someone, 
which is good when we are handling translations and we need to look at um, the, um, uh, I have to uh, read <laughs> I am so easily distracted don't ask me to look at something on a normal screen if you give me the remarkable I'm less distracted uh, it helps me focus and um, I can annotate and I can yellow marker everything thing I want there and it's, it's a useful way of handling things and last but not least I have my trusted ember mug for uh, <laughs> for uh, keeping my uh, my coffee hot this is um uh, it's a uh, bluetooth connected uh, coffee mug um, which is, has a stand that charges it and it has a battery in the bottom that keeps it uh, keeps um, the coffee warm and uh, I've been make you know really irritated for a long time that my coffee got cold and I have to you know just pour it out and get not never now it's all always for one and a half hour it will keep my coffee warm so uh, <laughs> for all the things you didn't know you needed <laughs> ember e m b e m b e r um, mug I think I have the version two or something I don't know but it is good. You can uh, clearly tell that um, this really is more Morton's episode than mine. Mine, mine is very simple and basic, straightforward. I think uh, there's nothing, you know, all the cool uh, software and tips. I try to stay sort of very basic and, you know, simple, mm. straightforward. I don't know what the right word would be. Um, Morton has all the, the cool tech and gear and tips and tricks. Uh, mm. So, um, yeah, no, always mm. fun, to, fun to see. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I, I'm... I don't know if I'm going to say this, but I have just had a friend. <laughs> it sounds friends like you're going to say it. <laughs> yeah, then, then we have friends over um, a couple of weeks weekends ago, where we had well, we I I dubbed it the, the nerd out party, where everybody you know there's a bunch of beautiful nerds that I know, and they um, they brought all their tech and gear and gadgets and. Uh, and it was a tech fest. It was really cool. <laughs> we ate um, good food. We we, we drank um, good drinks and enjoyed our techs um, <laughs> and, and sh show and tell. That that was really. Um, mm. it, it was, a, and we will do it again. So, and um, I I will try and in, involve you in this, Lars. So you have some excuse for <laughs> buying some new tech if you need that. Uh, yeah, it sounds expensive. Yeah, it it, it it probably was, but it is a lot of cool tech I have never seen before. Um, like you attach something to a to, to a physical object. Well, I think we both have seen this before. We saw it in 2019 when Uwe Kenneth Nielsen, uh, aka Arsje, um, a Norwegian um, a musician, uh, who who played his bicycle. Mm. It means he attached this and you can then uh, assign different sounds to the different parts of the bicycle when you when you hit it with your fingers or something it, you, you will understand it gives a sound and you can play it like a rhythmical instrument so he played a bottle of gin <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> uh, uh, nerd out yes uh, <laughs> very specific use case i think not not yeah. a lot of people who are looking to, to no, play a bottle no. of gin but if if no. you need to now you know how to <laughs> yeah yeah it was and uh, we had um, um a good friend of mine who is uh, um we call him in the family we call him the gin king he's a gin enthusiast here in norway who um who brought oh, the bottle of gin we were talking which, about yeah <laughs> yeah so he and he uh, bought a very uh, specific brand of gin that's very rare and uh, he played that bo bottle of gin and he he, <laughs> he he then made a video of that and sent it to the, the 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 producer of the gin so i don't know what the result has been <laughs> and probably he will get a free bottle or something <laughs> i don't know nice okay okay switching to to software would you like mm -hmm. to go first lars yeah, let me go first because I will again uh, <laughs> intentionally sticking to a very basic uh, Apple ecosystem uh, approach. Um, so I am da -da -da, still on Apple reminders. Um, I know uh, a number of people were curious to see whether I would actually stick to uh, to this coming from Todoist. Would I be able to actually leave the, uh, the Todoist the platform behind? But that's uh, working very well for me. So especially for, for capturing, um, if we, we um, take the 
take that approach, then then certainly reminders is is the the key key place where I where I capture things. Um, I also use the uh, the memos app. So again, standard Apple memos app, mm -hmm. uh, corresponding uh, things on on uh, Android as well, um, just to record whatever's on my mind. Typically, when I'm driving, um, right now I'm experimenting with a um, a shortcut where it records into Apple Notes, uh, the Notes app, instead of uh, instead of through the Memos app, because I anyway use the uh, Notes app as a, as a capture location as well for me. So mm. just to simplify that and not having to open the Memos app would uh, would actually work, uh, work better for me. So playing around with that, hopefully that will, will work. I don't think it works yet on the phone, so that's why I'm sort of still un, um, undecided on whether I will go, uh, go with that uh, as a, my standard approach, but but something I'm playing around with at least. Um, and then in, you know, the, the Notes app has really, I'm starting to use that as my key storage location for capturing you know, things like meeting notes, for example, or notes for this podcast. Um, they will always go there. And I actually, uh, I've started to really like that now, um, really mm -hmm. uh, become friends with that. So having all the meeting notes there, the default notes location, the folder where, where things end up, um, that's where I'll throw all the different kinds of stuff. And as I clear out the inbox in my, my reminders app, I'll head on over to the notes app as well and, and go through that and, you know, capture any actions that I need to take or any, any waiting for or whatever it might be that, that mm -hmm. I find in those notes. Um, so I'm really liking that actually. It's been, been very, very, um, a, you know, a good addition to my system, something that I sort of a bit more complex uh, capture tool than the, in the digital space than, than mm -hmm. reminders would offer me. Then, then I'm um, sure I can hear our listener asking, why don't you use Siri and, you know, capture straight into Reminders? Well, well, for me uh, in meetings, uh, it would be a bit, uh, <laughs> be a bit tricky to, to talk to, talk to Siri. Um, mm -hmm. No, it'll but be, so I had a uh, reminder, but, but you, you, you said for, for capturing on the go, you, you still use the, the memo app or, or Yes. The recording app on your on your watch and uh, exactly but why don't you use that into into reminders is the question yeah so so when it's uh, it's meetings for example so i'm looking at a, a sales meeting now that i had um earlier last uh, month so as i was preparing for that meeting i was reading about the organization i had my own notes that i wanted to mm -hmm. share with them i had an agenda that i wanted to walk through with the, them to share different ideas on how we could certify a trainer with their with their company or whether i would come and deliver something whatever you know would, would work best for them um, so that was my agenda. Then I had uh, notes from the actual meeting, um, mm -hmm. some of the things that she shared that were critical for them, uh, requirements for how we would deliver the seminar if we were to move ahead with that. Yeah. Um, so, so things like that were just captured there. Um, and, um, and I like so having them separately. Like, it's, it's not strictly like um, a, um, a capture on the go, but it's more like, um, you know, capture ideas around yeah. the subject or a meeting. And support or... material for the meeting yeah. uh, mm. from a GCD perspective. Um, mm. And then I'll capture, you know, there, there was, a, uh, we talked about perhaps they wanted to do a questionnaire. So I have a sort of a snapshot before and after. I said, well, I know, I know someone in Norway who made a really nice one. Uh, let me share that with you. So that's one of the actions here. And there was some mm. other actions to share the course information and things like that. Um, so that'll be in my uh, just the one called notes in in um, in the in the notes app, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then uh, I'll just just put everything in there and walk through that and grab those actions less than two minutes, do them right away. Longer, get them into the CRM system or or get them onto the the list depending on what it was. So that mm. that's working. That's probably the 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 most recent change to my system, and I'm actually really really enjoying that. That there's a lot of flexibility uh, flexibility in, in using the notes there. Um, so, so really, really happy with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have my good old fashioned paper next to me. Uh, this is yep. actually the one I started using now. I ran out of paper with the, oh, what's it called? The one you have as well, the French one, the Exa mm -hmm. Compte uh, something something. Exa uh, Compte. <laughs> that, that we got. F -f -f yeah, something like that. <laughs> I ran out of paper and I, I did not uh, order it yet. So right now I am using the uh, GCD Summer Camp 2022 notes, uh, notepads ah. that we had uh, made back then. A lot of good ideas is, is uh, ending up on, on that paper. Um, mm -hmm. 
so I'm actually enjoying using using that and then it goes into my uh, new in tray since last year uh, it's mm -hmm. i think i've had it for about six months but we both have it now uh, here at the office it's from uh, muji m-u-j-i um, has this this wooden um, two layer um, in tray really nice uh, just uh, you know yeah, it's just it, it looks good. It's nice to have, you know, fancy fancy mm. tools for, for something like this. So really mm. pleased with uh, with that one. Yeah, don't underestimate the, the attraction of the the things you will use if you like. Yeah, it. exactly. No, and I just like you know it, it, it looks good, it's very sturdy. It's uh, yeah. No, it's mm. uh, I, I'm I'm very happy with it. Mm. Um other than that, from a capture perspective, um, yeah, one note still for general reference, but don't really capture anything into one note it's, it's really more of an unorganized thing um of course apple mail for for emails um mm -hmm. it all ends up in there able to integrate that with reminders that works well like i said both on the on the mac and on uh, on the uh, ipad so so happy mm -hmm. with that as well um i think from a capture perspective that that's pretty much what i use the reminders app the memo app or the shortcut to to note the notes mm -hmm. app itself paper and um uh, and mail i think that uh, that is a uh, that is what i was able to <laughs> to bring it down to that's sort of the the minimum uh, minimum level obviously we have other communication channels that we we would use internally like the google suite and things like that but i think these mm. are sort of the most the most common ones for for me mm. What about you when we talk capture, if we were to take take that approach? Capture, um, well, I, I use my um, my Apple Watch for capture into reminders for, you know, every day remember to buy cat food uh, kind of stuff. And, um, and I do agree with you that Siri has a long way to go, but she is slowly improving, especially with the last iOS 17. I think she's been uh, becoming more and more intelligent. Um, which I'm, I'm fascinated by. Um, you can actually um, ask follow-up questions, which is kind of like she was, you asked her a question, she asked uh, before she was uh, notoriously uh, forgetful because she will not remember what you said three seconds ago. So it's like, you never said it, so you can't ask follow-up question. Now you <laughs> can. Um, but um, for reminders, I use that and I use my iPhone sometimes, but um, mostly my Apple Watch because it's, on my wrists all all time and it will capture into my reminders inbox where i will then clarify and organize it later um, and um, i also i capture on paper here in the office and the exaconta block fuff uh, it's um, to this it's a very strange name, but it is a it's a sturdy. Um, it keeps it still on the table. It doesn't move, and it's um, yeah. And I use just a uh, <laughs> get nerdy a, 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 a small now it's small, but it is a Faber Castell um, um, pencil. I like pencils for for note taking. Um, and then I um, I also use uh, my my capture wallet sometimes, and I use my I have a wallet with a very small pen. Now you should be on the video. If you're not on the video listening to this, you should jump into Mortenrovic <laughs> uh, GTD and you will <laughs> see what I'm showing you. It's uh, it's called uh, Can I show this Mini Moto? Um, uh, sorry. Mm. Uh, it's a minimo, very small um, and very thin, um, what do you call it, a ballpoint pen hmm. with a small, uh, let's see if I can do this. And you can, uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's remarkably uh, sturdy and it is a little, if you have big fingers or big hands, this will not work for you, but it is, if you have a medium size or small hands, this works really well. And uh, it sticks into the side of my uh, my my wallet, so I always have it with me. Hmm. And this has been with me for no, no more than two years, I think. And this plastic thing that is, uh, that, you know, I stick into the side of the wallet, like this. It's it's like new. I don't know what they made it of. It looks like super plastic <laughs> or something. <laughs> so that's my capture tools. Um, and uh, should I continue in like reference or where do you want to go now? 
You yeah, that's a good question, and I can just add that I also still have the uh, the capture wallet, and I still use that sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. For example, when you know delivering a seminar, and mm -hmm. someone says something, or they're doing an exercise, and I'm reminded about something, mm -hmm. I'll I'll still yeah. pick that out of the the bag and and, and mm -hmm. write things down because yeah, it's just a, <laughs> a nicer way to uh, <laughs> to um, to stay present. Let's put it yeah, that way. It is. And we are easily distracted. Yeah. Don't show us any notifications. <laughs> no, and also, you know, people will have different ideas of what you're doing if you're if you're standing there with your phone. So to be mm. uh, to be safe, I, I like to stay to <laughs> stick to paper. Mm. Um, yeah. So if we go to to organize, um, I'm like I said, still on the reminders app. Um, I mm. think it's um, it, it's working well for me. I think the integration with Apple Mail is. Uh, is a key piece here, and that's that. Mm. That is uh, is is very solid. Um, mm. I am not missing the link between projects and next action, so I know that's one area where you and I will will differ in our system setup. Um, I don't have that link, and I am really liking it. <laughs> but but it, that may I, I think we referenced it in an earlier episode. That may be because I have a relatively few projects in my system right now so may, that's maybe why i'm okay with the, without that link um but for now i you know i really appreciate the the simple lists and uh, mm. the simpler they get the the better for me so so without that link i'm i'm still very very happy um many of the projects that i have will either have checklists so they'll be in a, a google sheet right now that's mm. where they are placed or they will be in the CRM system uh, where we still use a pipe drive to manage all of that uh, customer activities. Mm -hmm. um, so, so very happy with it. One thing that I'm playing around with is is how I want to to organize it. Um, a good thing that was added to remind us was the ability to to group lists, um, which enabled me to. Uh, distinguish between the work related lists and the uh, personal related lists so mm -hmm. having them in in separate uh, groups really helped me so i have a um, a work group where i have all my different lists i have a personal one where i have all my my different lists as well um mm -hmm. and the way that i've grouped it right now just to you know go into a bit more detail um, is that i have my inbox at the top as as usual um, I actually have a, a short list of the uh, most important things for me to focus on right now from a work perspective. So I've actually put that in a in a separate place just below the inbox. It's a new thing for me. I did that, I think, last week or the week before. So something I'm playing around with. But like I said, I want to really have very simple lists. And as soon as my lists grow mm -hmm. to 15, 20 next actions, as my uh, Mac list might do, then I'll, I'll pick out some and put on that uh, high, uh, you know, mm. focus on this first kind of kind of list. So playing around with mm. that, see how, how that works. But otherwise, I have a list of my projects, work-related coaching clients, um, work to do at the Mac, sales-related work, finance list, my trusted old zombie list, um, mm -hmm. some videos to watch, and my, my waiting for list, mm. uh, of course. Mm. Um, so you'll find them in my in my work list then i have my my personal stuff um, personal projects um i have split my stuff i need to do at home into you know one list and then their hobby things i'm really trying to focus more on on hobbies and, and becoming better at and, and spending time on my hobbies again which i have sort mm. of fallen off uh, so they have a separate list because for me it just it annoyed me that i had you know this fun hobby thing to do next to you know cleaning the the drains or the yeah. whatever <laughs> things in the kitchen um it just not it so didn't funny things, fit, yes. it, 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 those weren't the options that i wanted to choose from right so um, no, no. they ended up on separate lists actually mm. <laughs> so i have my my hobby list there stuff to do at the summer house waiting for yeah. uh, someday That's maybe uh, personal as well um, they they go on those lists Hmm. And then actually, I, I'm guessing this is different from yours as well, or perhaps it's the same as yours. I don't, I don't remember. But I have created a separate group group for uh, agendas because I have so many agenda lists that mm. I just it was just overwhelming to see them when I opened up the all yeah. right time to do some work um, let me look and through my work list and, and see what's there and mm. there were you know seven different agenda lists that would clutter up mm. the, the space so they actually have their own group now um, not ideal but better than it it was before uh, last two groups one is just other lists that I did not want to <laughs> see anywhere else so they have their own space to to go to uh, and one group for errand because we have different errands lists that we uh, we both uh, utilize so so they have their own group and the last one the bottom one is is one just called planned 
Um, so I don't know if this might be be helpful for some of you out there listening, but I had, you know, I have a number of next actions that are either time based or location based, and they mm. needed to live somewhere. And they don't, mm. they're not really a, a tickler because some of them are sort of, yeah, like I said, location based, for example, next time at, I'm at the summer house, the neighbor mm. asked me to check if the gardener had been there to do X, Y, and C, um, mm. those kinds of things. So they have the bottom list where all the stuff I have planned with either reminders uh, from a date perspective or geolocation, can, they all go in there. Can I ask a question there? Because are mm -hmm. you using then just a list for the, the location or are you using location based notifications? location-based notifications yeah okay so so when you arrive at your summer house this will mm -hmm. show up on your radar yes mm -hmm. exactly exactly like so that's really the the full setup um i where can i still improve i think i still put dates on too many things that's i think that corresponds also to how my, my brain works so that's uh, still so a, a focus for me but i think that's that's improving right now i have pretty full inbox but that's also because i just came home last night from a vacation, vacation. In, uh, in cyprus so uh, a lot of uh good ideas that, that showed up on the, on the vacation that I did not clarify and organize while we were there. Uh, that's part of uh, today's uh, activities. Um, nothing in notes, um, mails. I just, I, I did the emergency scanning and, and organizing on, on the vacation. So I have you know, a number of mails that I need to, to get to, but otherwise mm -hmm. I think this, um, this, this works uh, very well for me. Mm -hmm. um, the happy with the list, happy with the setup. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this this is probably the best setup for me. Um, and and lastly, I don't think we covered it. The calendar I use mostly the the built-in Apple calendar. When I need more detail, I need to view your calendar. I need to schedule meetings. I'll head on over to the the Google uh, version on the on the website. But uh, other than that, um, I think that's that's about it. Hmm. Uh, but perhaps I'll be reminded when you go through your list of <laughs> other yeah. stuff that I, that <laughs> I still use. You can append at the end. <laughs> yes. Something. No, yeah. no I'm, uh, I am, as you, using Apple Reminders, and I think our setup is more or less, you know, not identical, but it has res um, uh, resembles uh, each other. So I also use groups for group lists together and to be able to hide them. Like I, I can uh, I have a, a group for my next actions that I can open or close. Um, I have also, as you have, an agenda for a list that can be open and closed, uh, which makes it easier for I can then choose who who I want to to see. Um, I also um, have um, some repeating tasks that I will do that will become um, active as day specific uh, tasks um, something that i'm doing uh, once a month like clean the roborock um, i have some money i must send every month i would like to weigh myself every morning to keep an eye on my my weight and then i have some um, um, water the orchids once a week that's my job in mm. the home and um, yeah and um so and and i have um, ideas to nice things to do that's probably uh, something you also have if you find something you would like to do with your your beautiful wife you will probably put it somewhere to be mm. reminded of it at some yeah. so and we have um, things to do there and then i have um, the weekly review checklists which is then um, just a, it's not a it's not the checklist itself, but it's a link to my note where I have the checklist because I in Apple Notes I do the the checklist for the weekly review, and um, and and I do as you enjoy the integration between the different apps in the in the, in the you know Apple ecosystem, um, and because of Notes becoming such a you know grown up uh, and re Apple reminders as well becoming grown up when it comes to to what they what, what they can do and the stability and the integration with the Google Calendar it makes it uh, compelling like um, if I have something that I really just have to set outside time for today I can do that by 
this is iOS 17 specifically, but if I'm on the, my, or not specifically, but iOS, I can, I can open up the, the calendar, I can open up the, the, the reminder set, and then I can take a reminder, tap and hold, and I can drag it out in the air, and then I can swipe so I get the calendar view, and then I drop it where I want to do that. And that is such a beautiful little thing to do. So now I focus is I will set aside 30 minutes or one hour to work on this next action. It's it's a way to prioritize. I use my calendar mm -hmm. for making sure I'm doing the right things. Um, because hello, everybody. My name is Morten and I sometimes procrastinate. I don't <laughs> like that. And I would like to do it as little <laughs> as possible. <laughs> so just push me to do the difficult things that I I feel like, oh. I really have to do this, and then uh, grown up inside me say, "Yes, you have to." So, mm. and I use as you Apple Notes, but for me, the Apple Notes um, is the landing place for what I call active notes, notes that I'm working on, where I have some project I would like to, you know, like uh, it's my pro project reference material, like action support mm. and project support. And um, it is a way to, to keep that. And that could, of course, be linked to the, the, the project in, um, in the reminder so that I can you know, easily get to that information. Um, I can also... I've been using I, that a lot, actually. You, you mentioned that, I guess, at the summer camp uh, or perhaps mm -hmm. at some other time before that when we met. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just, uh, you know, the, the, the link, uh, I, I certainly use that as well, where you yeah. just take a note, drag it into reminders, and then you mm -hmm. have that link back. So whenever I have a project with the support material, that's how I'll mm -hmm. create that project, my project list, by just creating that note, adding the thoughts that I needed to capture there, and then drag mm -hmm. it to reminders to, to make sure that I have it. So a really good yeah. tip. Yeah, it is, and it is. It, it works really well, and it's easy to do that. Uh, and you can also, in Apple Reminders, take a photo of something and then attach it to the reminder, or just open the reminder, create a new reminder, and take the photo. So you have, if there's something specifically you would like to, like, you see some something you like a gift idea or you know whiteboard you would like to to um, reference as a, as part of your reference material, you can very fast and easy both capture it in notes but also in uh, in reminders. That's that's hmm. powerful. And I also use the Apple Reminders for as you do location based reminders. So when I arrive uh, at my father's place, I'm reminded of things I need to get done there. And and when I get to the office, if something really critical, I need to do the first thing. Like if, if I get into the car, it's something I need to do. And it is easy to say, uh, call dad when I when I leave here. So when you're, you know, I think 50 meters from your location, it will automatically pop up, which is beautiful. It's easy and it's, it frees up my, my brain for thinking different thoughts. Um, and I use, I don't know if you use that, do you use, you, you, you mentioned OneNote, but I'm using DevonThink, it is more like, um, that's more my um, database of information that I need to get back to. Um, I use DevonThink um, uh, where I can then create notes, I can create a link to that note and put it in uh, either, uh, you know, the action support part if I wanted to use this in notes or more often in the reminders as a link to the project um, or I have a coaching client my coaching clients has a folder in that database where all the notes I take resides uh, my remar remarkable notes also ends up there when the, the client when we finish the clients um, the active coaching and it is a trusted place for me to uh, and it syncs to to my uh, my uh, MacBook Air, so I can have it with me if I I need that. Hmm. And uh, and I use something that um, I don't know if you use that. But I use uh, the Hook app for uh, make connections between files on my computer uh, or anywhere really to anywhere. Have you used Hook, Lars? Nope. No, no. I so I I I looked at it first one time and I said, I don't understand this. And then I give it a second try and I don't understand this. And then I took the time <laughs> to see the videos. Well, I think you've mentioned <laughs> it in the previous two years. So perhaps yeah. now I will get it. So yeah, it, it, but it, is, it, took, it took me quite a while to understand why on earth do I need this. But imagine that you are in somewhere, you don't have to even know where it is, but you have a file on your computer or in the, um, in the cloud. And then you can just make, um, you have a shortcut I think mine is control, 
H. I can't even remember seeing my fingers, but if I do Control H, it will create a um, comes up a little window with the name of that file or the folder, and then I can say Control uh, Command C to copy that location and then paste it anywhere, and it will it will be a direct uh, connection to that link, sorry to that file or folder, and then I can connect several files. So I, I can have, for instance, I have three files in one folder relating to a project and then I have a, another, um, you know, it can be a, um, a web link or anything really that you can uh, create a link to and then just combine them into one. So if I open one and I, I go the, um, the shortcut for hook, it will show you all the other files that's connected to that. So you can use it to connect to, to a, a plethora of different um, sources into one link that you can keep in your, um, for me, and reminders. And that works really well. But it took some time for me to understand how I'm, how I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, still yeah. didn't get me. Next year, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and I mentioned um, uh, on the Mac as a productivity tool, is uh, one of the things I've always been super frustrated with is the, how the Finder works. Um, because if you have to move a file, let's say you find a file and you have to drag it into email, you have to attach it to an email, but the email is somewhere else and then it disappears behind the window and oh, everything is lost. I don't know if you have that frustrations, but, mm. but uh, this, um, and I, I gave you the wrong name before for the, this, the window layout uh, tool that I use. It's called Moom, M-O-O-M. Moom, and it's part of the setup suite of apps that I'm, I'm subscribing to. So, but the, the 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 file I'm going to talk about now is called Yoink. I remember that Y O I N K, Yoink, and what it does is just any file you have anywhere on your computer and just um, click on it and drag it a few, you know, just a little short space outside where it is, then the Yoink window shows up close to where you have this and you can just drop it there. It's just a small square with a uh, with some a symbol mm. in it and it, you drop it and then that moves it to the side of the the, 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 the page, sorry, of, of your screen and it's hovering over all or other screens. So when you find where you want to drop that, like say, <laughs> let's say inside an email or another folder on, or um, if you want to upload to the web, you can just then drag from the Yoink little window and wherever you want it to go. And just simple as that. Oh, sounds useful. That, that is very useful. And I have one more app I wanted to, to share with our listeners. It's called um, Clean Shot. Also part of the setup. It sounds like now I'm... I'm uh, promoting setup, but it is a really a good suite of programs. If you know, it's like an app store, you make a subscription for setup and then you have access to all the, the, the programs in that, um, like iStat menus. I use that all the time, uh, a lot of other different uh, apps as well. But uh, the clean shot is an alternative to screenshots. Um, you know, the, the, the screenshots shortcuts um, that you have on the Mac to create a screenshot, you can then just disable that and en enable a clean shot instead. And it's a more versatile, more interesting way of doing it. It's uh, And it becomes, um, as I said with Joink, you, you have a little window that when you take the screenshot, it lives on the side. It doesn't, it's not saved to the desktop, which is the, my main concern with, with the, um, with the, the built-in um, screenshot tool from Apple. He said, where did that go? Well, it's on, then you have to do the five finger or four finger spread and then you get to the desktop and then go back and then it's a lot of, it's a lot easier, faster. I like hmm. that. I Easy, actually fast. used, to, used to, to struggle with that one as well, but learned that if you just add control into that mix, so it does require mm -hmm. that you, you, know, you remember one more, but, mm -hmm. but then just it's, it's copied to the clipboard, so it never creates those yeah. files. So that's what yeah. I use all the time. Shift command, oh. control three to make a full screen screenshot and four, shift four. control command four to make it you know, just a, uh, to, the, to the clipboard, a smaller yeah. version of it. So mm. that, that's, well, um, yeah. yeah, for those of you so, who don't have that app. Exactly. Uh, the, what what this the, the the clean shot can do as as well is to to do what we call a scrolling capture. 
So if you're on a web page, you can then start capturing that web page and you can scroll and it will take the whole page in one go. Do you understand? So the result will build the full page even though you can't see that on your Mac. Ooh. <laughs> 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 and it has, uh, you can also um, uh, record your screen. So you can, you can record screen and use that as a camera. Uh, if you want, so I could I could use that now as a camera here instead, and I can show my screen. And I can be as a little you know window on the side square, or yeah, it has a lot of extra functionality, and it has what I call the capture history, where which, which where I can go back and, and look at everything that I captured, um, and get back to it if I need to. So that's a clean shot. Um, I think that was what I wanted to mention. Um, I think we have a very close to an episode. We are at 50 minutes soon. So, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> no, but it always, you know, we, 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 uh, th there's a lot to mention. We use a lot yeah. of tools. Uh, want to share some, some tips. I uh, want to spend a bit mm. of time going into the details of the list or whatever it might be. Um, mm. I think for me, um, one more thing to add, um, text expander. I th yeah. think you just use, use text that, expander. Yeah. Uh, I still use the one called uh, a text. Um, works well for me. Um, also, some some shortcuts that that I use, uh, for mm. example, for stopping and starting meetings. So I'll hit that, and it'll that will send me to do not disturb mode, and it'll mm. turn on the uh, switch, which turns on the uh, key light, which turns on the camera, things like that. Yeah. So um, that uh, stops the Nerd. music from playing at the office, Nerd. things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that, uh, that I, I like that one. I don't have yeah. many, but that that one I I really like. So definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, play around with those shortcuts. It it can certainly make your your life easier. Yeah, and and I just was I was just reminded of another app. I have to mention that. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys, but it is it is a really cool one. It's um, uh, it's a um, Norwegian actually who who develops this. Uh, mm. It's called Dato, uh, Dato in Norwegian, which means date. And it has uh, the possibility to live in your, um, what do you call a task bar? The top bar, what do you mm, call that again? Yeah, the top right, yeah. Yeah, the task bar. I think it is called task bar. But at least uh, on the top bar of your, where you can replace it, where it becomes, um, you take away your date and time symbol and it will take over that place. And when you have a meeting, like what I use it for is that it, it has a calendar, but it, what, what is really cool is that if you have an online meeting, like a Zoom or a team meeting or a Google meeting, it will understand that it actually has that in it. And when I then look at, um, look at um, this uh, on the side, it will give me, I think it is one hour before it will tell you your next online meeting is plus one hour and 30 minutes. Okay. I understand that. But when it's five minutes over, you can, uh, five minutes before, I set it up to take over my screen, but blank the screen and say, in five minutes you have a meeting, prepare. <laughs> so you can just dismiss that and or say, repeat when the, the meeting starts, which I use. So when I'm, um, then I have, okay, I had to gather my head together and, you know, you know, revisit the notes and make ready for that meeting. And it helps me to be focused on what I'm doing. And then it takes over and, and sh kicks me out of whatever I'm doing. It doesn't kick you out, but it blanks the screen. And I can't see what's behind it before I dismiss that message and said, get ready. You have five minutes to the next meeting. And, um, and it then opens the meeting and starts, starts the program, opens the meeting, which is beautiful. Mm. Dato, D-A-T-O, and I think it is actually a free app. You can search on it, it's on GitHub or some somewhere. Search for Dato mm. Mac app. I'm sure you'll find oh, it. Yeah, cool. Okay, finished. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, right. Um, and yeah, before we do the usual wrap up, um, well, we've been doing this a couple of times now, but but like I said in the beginning, this is episode 98, which means that 100 is now pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, a quick reminder about a favor that we wanted to ask of all of you out there listening. Um, we would really appreciate uh, if we 
you know, got an email uh, from you with a, you know, an audio snippet or a video recording or whatever it might be, just um, any any sort of greeting that you would like to give us on the uh, the one hundredth episode, then we will see how we can integrate them into the episode, have a bit of fun with it. Thanks to those of you who have already submitted. We've both received audio, we've received video. There's room for mm-hmm. plenty more. So, and now we are approaching the deadline. I know some of you asked me, so the, when is the deadline? When do you need them? Let's say now is a good time to record it and send it to us yeah. so we can <laughs> so we yeah. can put it all together. Um, it doesn't have to be shiny, fancy, uh, polished in, in any way. Uh, whatever you can can send us, we, we really appreciate. So you probably also know where to send it, podcast at vitallearning.dk. That is the, the place to send it. So hope to hear from, from more of you. It uh, would, be, would be a lot of fun. Yeah. And thanks to all of you who, who writes to us uh, there and tell, uh, to tell, tell us about your experiences and uh, how you, the podcast has um, helped you and, and your listeners' questions. That's, uh, that's, that helps us keep it going hmm. for the next 100 episodes. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I guess on to the usual wrap up. Take us on unless you have anything. No, no. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, and we always do that with a quick reminder for you to head on over to vitallearning.eu because that's where you'll find all of the information about the company, the different offerings that we have regarding getting things done, the different seminars, coaching, speeches, also the other seminars that we offer, Crucial Conversations for Mastering Dialogue, Crucial Conversations for Accountability, Crucial Influence, The Power of Habit. You will find it all there, including links to the different country websites where you can read more in your local language. If you are not in the Nordic countries, head on over to cruciallearning.com to find your local partners as well to learn GT in one of their really good seminars. Mm. Now back to you. Okay. It's time for me to say what I normally say. Until <laughs> next time. Stay safe and stay productive. <laughs> bye bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>